Now brace yourself because this next story sounds like a mad science project, something you would expect from a Bond villain. Russia and China want to install a nuclear plant on the moon. Who's saying this? The head of Russia's space agency. He's also given a timeline. He wants to install and deliver this plant by 2035. First, the obvious question, why? A nuclear plant on Earth is dangerous enough. Why do you need one on the moon? For energy. In 2021, Russia and China signed an agreement. They decided to build a nuclear search, research, a lunar research station, basically a moon base. Russia and China wanted to build it. And these bases will need electricity to run. But options are few. The obvious one is solar energy. Fit some panels on the base, and store the sun's energy. But there's a problem. The nights on the moon last up to 14 days. That's 14 days with no sunlight, which is why scientists are seeking other options. In this case, nuclear energy. That answers the why of this bond project. Now let's look at the how. How do you build a nuclear plant on the moon? The plan is to deliver the reactor to the lunar surface. Russia says robots will then install it. Apparently, all the technical concerns have been addressed except one. How to cool the reactor? Nuclear plants require vast amounts of water. We're talking about billions of gallons per year. That's the kind of water they need. This water is used to cool the reactors. It must then be filtered and stored. Again, there's a problem. The moon doesn't have that much water. Researchers have found traces and molecules, but nowhere near billions of gallons of water. Until that problem is solved, a nuclear-powered moon colony is a pipe dream. But the idea itself is not really bad. In fact, it's actually been tried before, though the scale was much smaller. Let me take you back to 1969. The Apollo 12, the Apollo 12 mission, landed two astronauts on the moon. They carried a nuclear generator with them. Solar panels were not reliable enough, so NASA settled on a nuclear generator. From all accounts, it worked pretty well. It gave enough power to conduct all the tests. So nuclear energy has been used on the moon before, not as a plant, but as a generator. And NASA is looking to expand it. They too have plans for a long-term lunar base to settle humans on the moon for 10 years. And what's their power source? The same as Russia, a nuclear reactor. In 2022, NASA gave three contracts to private companies. They were asked to design the lunar reactors. Last month, the first phase of that plan was wrapped up. NASA wants two things from the reactor. One, it should weigh under six tons. And two, it must produce 40 kilowatts, which is enough to power more than 30 households. Again, we don't know how NASA will cool it down. We also don't know how this reactor will be taken to the moon, but we do know one thing. Space exploration is entering a nuclear age. The first space race was all about reaching somewhere, like the Earth's orbit, or the moon, or Mars. This new race is about staying there. And for that, you need more powerful energy sources. Nuclear power could be the answer. Just think about it. What if you want to explore beyond the solar system or set up a base on Mars? Then solar panels will not help you. But nuclear energy can. It can produce more power over longer periods of time. Of course, there are risks here too. What happens if your nuclear payload crashes on the moon? Like what happened to Russia last year? The spacecraft was called Luna 25. It was the first Russian lunar mission in 47 years, and it failed. The Luna 25 lost control and crashed on the moon. So we need to be mindful of these risks. Also, nuclear reactors could be a slippery slope. What if nuclear weapons are next? Recently, the US accused Russia of trying to place nukes in space. President Putin rejected those claims. But what if someone else actually does it? So nuclear energy is a double-edged sword. It could unlock the next chapter in space exploration. It could also trigger a nuclear space race.